Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 193, uh, we'll conclude this kind of four lesson series um, by looking at one last approach for identifying architectural components and creating a logical architecture, and that's something called the actor action approach. Uh, you can get a listing of all the lessons I do in Software Architecture Monday at my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Now, way back in lesson 190, uh, I talked about logical versus physical architecture. Uh, then, in lesson 191, I showed you something called the entity trap, uh, an anti-pattern for creating a logical architecture. Well, two weeks ago, I showed you lesson 192, which was something called the workflow approach to identifying initial components and creating a logical architecture. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to conclude this kind of series right here um, by showing you one last approach, and that is the actor action approach. Uh, we will continue to use the SysOp Squad example. If you haven't seen any of those prior lessons from 190, 191, and 192, I would highly recommend watching those before this particular lesson. But as you remember from two weeks ago, uh, the SysOp Squad is an architectural kata, a case study, um, where customers can purchase a support plan, and if they have problems or issues with the electronic equipment they purchase from us, uh, they can enter a trouble ticket into our system, and our field experts will come out to your home or office and fix your problem. In Lesson 190, uh, we saw this logical architecture, and in the past two lessons, we've been asking, how do you create this? Well, two weeks ago, uh, we saw something called the workflow approach. Let me show you another way of identifying those components, and it's something called the actor-action approach. Uh, very similar for the to the first couple of activities within domain-driven design. Uh, the actor-action approach, however, um, very much precedes uh, domain-driven design. This was um, created um, many, many decades ago. Um, but with this, we identify the major actors in the system. Well, for SysOp Squad, certainly we have customers. Um, we have the field experts. And also, we have the system itself that does certain things. What we do with each kind of actor is we think about, without having requirements, just thinking about the core problem. What are some of the things each of these actors can do in the system? And we realize, well, without requirements, certainly customers can create tickets. Uh, they register with the site. Uh, they can update and create a profile. Uh, they can complete a survey, those sort of things. OK, so let's list those down. What about field experts? Hmm. Well, really, what their primary activity is from a system standpoint is to complete tickets. And the system does a lot of things on its own. Uh, the system assigns tickets. It locates the right expert in the field. It routes the ticket. It notifies the customer. It sends the customer a survey, uh, those sort of things. OK, now that we've got the actors identified and some of the major things those actors do, now we can start identifying components. Like the workflow approach, each action that an actor can take is not necessarily always going to produce a new logical component, a new core component. Oh, we may have multiple actions that happen to be used by a single component. Uh, a good example would be this. Now, we have update profile here. If I had added create profile, um, both of those, and I'll put create here, might be done by the same component. And so we still have this, uh, this not necessarily a one-to-one. -one. But we have no components identified now. So let's start with create ticket. Well, we'll do a ticket creation. Uh, this is a logical component with lots of source code that will be involved in the ticket creation process. Now, registering with a site, well, we've got ticket creation there, but now that doesn't make sense, not part of its responsibility. So let's do a custom, customer registration. Now, to update the profile, we can do a customer profile. 
kind of component uh, that manages that piece. Uh, completing a survey, none of these three really seem to match, so oh, we'll create a new one. Survey receiver. Now notice, in lesson 191, I showed you that actor action approach. I'm sorry, <laughs> in lesson 191, I showed you the entity trap. And remember we had customer manager, ticket manager. Well, one of the things that I stressed in lesson 191 was that the name of a component matters. It should be self-describing. And that's a litmus test that you can place when you're creating a logical architecture. So say, what does that component do? What does survey receiver do? Well, it receives a survey from the customer. And that makes sense. So always kind of challenge your name to make sure that anybody else looking at your architecture um, will understand what that component does. Now, completing a ticket to that point, let's do a ticket completion. And it's very clear what that component, that logical component, is responsible for. And now we have the system itself. So assigning a ticket, let's create ticket assignment, ticket routing to route the tickets, a notify customer, we'll create a customer notification, and survey to send the survey. Uh, we'll create a survey sender. So we have a survey sender and receiver. And now we take these kind of actions from these actors, and now we can build that initial logical architecture, uh, identifying the interactions with the different actors, and also now the corresponding uh, uh, relationships between these components. And now we can start identifying domains, groupings of these. There's a customer domain, a survey domain, and finally a ticketing domain. Like the message I gave you two weeks ago, I'm going to repeat that same message here that this is a very solid and common approach to identifying the initial core components. Uh, a lot of times we call this the naive architecture. Um, it's an initial first draft. But knowing that these components will likely change once we start assigning requirements and user stories to these components, uh, we'll find some of them don't and maybe shouldn't have that kind of responsibility, and we'll create new components. Uh, we may find that a component gets too big, and so we'll break it apart. Uh, we may find that components are so small, because they only contain one or two class files, uh, that we end up putting those together and share that responsibility. Um, so I do want to stress, these techniques are great for identifying those initial core components so that we have a starting point of a logical architecture of how that SysOps squad system is going to work. So this has been lesson 193, um, identifying components using the actor action approach. And uh, this will kind of conclude the whole logical architecture piece. So uh, stay tuned in two more weeks for uh, yet another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.